Today we'll draw a cute and fluffy ship illustration using standard Procreate brushes and a couple of brushes from my sweet putty brush set. You can download the color palette and the brushes used in this drawing for free at the description below. Let's get started! The canvas size is 2000 by 2000 pixels. I will begin with a quick sketch for our cute ship. Go into Select Black Color from Color Disk and Studio Pen Brush from Inking. I will lower the brush size and start drawing the shape of a small cloud that is turned a little, around 45 degrees to horizontal axis. Imagine that you are drawing a simple illustration for children's coloring book. I think this is how the clouds usually look in simple drawings. After that, I'm gonna draw another cloud-looking shape, consisting of small arcs. It will be a little bigger than the first one. It will go to the right, then down. I think I'll draw from this side and make the edges meet. If you are struggling with drawing this, you can use the sketch that I attached in the description together with the color palette and brushes. The fluffy part is ready. Let's draw the head that is a part of a novel, a little flattened at one side. I will also draw the simple ears. The second one will be less visible because of the angle. Now let's draw the front limbs. Here comes the first one, that is closer to the viewer. And another one on the opposite side. The third one will go this way. We assume our ship is jumping or even flying. Maybe it's one of those we count while trying to fall asleep. Drawing the fourth leg, that is on the opposite side of the body. Let's not forget to draw the small cute fluffy tail. And some details on the face. Here I will place the round eyes. And draw a tiny heart-shaped nose with a small line. The sketching part is complete, we can proceed to coloring. First, let's change the background color into this bluish from the color palette. I will set the blending mode of the sketch layer to multiply. Reduce the opacity to 7%, create a new layer and place it below. Let's go to the color palette and select the slightest green color. I will also go and pick soft brush from air brushing. First of all, let's block the color of this cloudy part of the ship's head. I will do it by making the circular moves around the shape. After that, paint inside it. I will create another layer for the body and place it below the current one. Let's do the same for this fluffy part. I can say that we don't have to be very accurate, because the edges will be smudged in the end. But still I love it when my drawing looks nice during the process. Let's create a separate layer for the tail below the body layer. Now we should create a new layer between these two. Select this upper color and monoline brush from calligraphy set. The size is at its minimum. I will outline the first ear. Connect the invisible parts and fill it. Then draw the second one, same way. Just a reminder that the streamline of my monoline brush is set to 100%, which makes the drawing of curvy lines easier. I'm outlining the head following the sketch, connecting and also filling it. 
We continue drawing on the same layer. It will be this leg. Trying to make it accurate and clean. Even if it's not, we have an eraser, which we can use to fix all that we draw. After the edges are connected, I will drop the color into the shape. This leg will be located on the current layer as well. I'm drawing it slowly. Ideally, it would be great to draw such shapes with one stroke, without lifting the pencil. Once we lift it, it may be not easy to continue exactly from same point, and we need to be very precise while connecting the edges. Ok, let's drag and drop the color inside the leg. I will create a new layer below the body fur and change the color into this darker one from another column. We will draw the remaining two legs. Just following the sketch to draw the parallel shape. I will fix this part. Let me connect it here and then fill. And the last one. I will rotate the canvas to feel more comfortable. Need to connect it too before dragging the color into the shape. Let's grab the darkest brown color and create a layer above this one. I will draw a circle for the eye, tapping my finger on the canvas to make it perfect, filling it. Go into color disk to pick the white color. Let me set the brush size to 4% and tap here inside the eye. Then increase it to 28% and tap on the opposite side. I will duplicate the eye and place it according to my sketch. After that, the layers can be merged. I will pick the dark brown color from the eye, set the brush size back to minimum value and draw this tiny hard nose that will add some cuteness to our ship. Let's paint inside and then draw this line. Even if it goes outside the head shape, it's fine, because after we clip the layer, that part won't be seen. We are done with the base coloring and can delete the sketch layer. Here comes my most favorite part of any drawing. This is shading stage. Let's grab the middle green color and go to the brush library. Here's a set called drawing and there's a brush at the bottom that is called copperhead. I will use it. And begin working on this first small cloud. The opacity is at 60%. Let's set the size to 15% and see how it works. The brush is very pressure sensitive. I better lower the size to 9%. Now it's better. I will darken this part, making short strokes going outwards. Also adding texture this way. We haven't locked the layer, so the strokes are going outside the shape. You should keep that in mind. Let's switch to full opacity maybe. Add more strokes. Then go to our palette and pick this first light color. I think it's fine if we increase the size while drawing in the middle. I will lighten the remaining part, leaving tiny gaps with the base color. Following the direction from center outwards too. While shading, it is always nice to add a transition in color. We will use the shade of yellow for this purpose. I will draw on the right lower side to make a more interesting color combination. If we just left few shades of green, it would be too boring. I will go back to middle green 
and darken this part a little bit more. And maybe make some strokes of this light green. Now let's select same brush as a smudger. We will turn this textured shape into cotton candy. I will increase the size to 19% and begin to smudge inside the shape making circles. The opacity is not full and I am not pressing too much on the pencil. On the edges I will change the technique a little. I will lift the pencil from the canvas and make the single circular strokes to add this fluffiness. Same way blend the colors inside the shape too. On the forehead we should be more accurate and lower the size a little. I will make this fluffy messy edges. A little more blending. The colors can be blended in different directions. If we want more of a darker color, we go from dark to light and vice versa. Keep smudging until we get the desired effect. Ok, I think this one looks fluffy enough and we can go to a bigger shape. I will start with middle green and increase the size a little. Let's darken the lower part following this direction, from the top down to the right. One more row of this color, going same way. And I will darken this part near the tail. After that, I will go with the light color. From the center outwards, leaving tiny gaps of base color. And follow the direction of hair growth. Just imagine a fluffy sphere. I think it looks fluffy even without smudging. Ok, let's add a yellow spot here as a highlight gives this interesting color variation. Now we can start smudging it. Here in the center I will make circles without lifting the pencil, can make the brush size even bigger, goes faster this way. On the edges I will create this hairy texture, making the circular moves lifting the pencil from the canvas. We can also change the shape size this way. Let's go around and blend all the colors inside this cloud. Again, if we want to widen the darker area, we start smudging from dark color and go towards the light one. And if you feel that more light color needed, we follow the opposite direction. To create a shadow under the head, I will pick the darkest green tone and first add some strokes with the brush, here and here. Then smudge it carefully in different directions for better blending of colors. This is actually a very relaxing process. I could do smudging forever. A few more strokes and I think this is enough. I want to add some more light spots. Over here, on this part and also some darker shades on the lower part and maybe here too. We'll smudge it. It's my personal preferences. I'm just looking at the image and feeling where I want to add more colors. You can even add some other shades of pink or light purple or whatever your favorite color. Just make sure all those colors are blended properly. Some final touches with this light yellow color. I will lower the brush size 
and opacity. And draw carefully strictly on the lower edge of this shape. This will be our reflected light coming from the ground. We're not gonna smudge it to keep this furry texture. At the same time, this gives a feeling of volume. We don't see the flat shape. Together with the texture, it also got dimension. Just following the shape along the edge, not making it too wide. Going back and forth, making these tiny strokes. Let's highlight the areas around the legs. First this one. And another one too. Ok, let's go to the tail layer. Start from the middle green. I will add it on the lower part. Then switch to the light color and draw on top. A little yellow in the middle. And let's also smudge it. Using same technique. Making circular moves in the middle and on the edges. Let me check if some adjustments are needed. Ok, I think this yellow color needs more blending. I will just go with the smudge tool quickly on the areas where yellow is transitioning to other shades. A little more. And I think this part can be considered complete. For body and head shading, let's create a layer above this one. That will be clipped straight away. I will select the middle color from this column and I will be using grunge brush that can be found under Procreate's textures. Let's set the size to 11% and opacity to 74. First, I will create the cast shadow coming from the fur on the head. Then go down this way, stretching the color a little up as well. Let's add some shading on this ear that comes from fluffy part, same on the second ear. And it will go a little down on the side. On the front leg I will shade it on top and on the side, not pressing too much for better blending of colors. Let's shade this leg too at the bottom, applying same texture. Now let's switch to the light yellow color and highlight this side of the ear, going a bit to the center. On the opposite side, same color will be used for reflected light, but only on the edge. Let's work on the second ear. I will first lighten the lower part and go to both sides of it. On the front leg I will highlight this area slightly. Let me lower the brush size to add the reflected light on the edge where we made the shading. And of course this leg needs some highlight as well. I will draw slightly on top. Then lower the size. And also add the reflected light that will give us this feeling of dimension.
I think it looks great. We need to add same color on the head. With increased brush size, I will first draw on the side slightly and lighten the middle area too. With a lower size, I will highlight the edge on the side with shading. Go a little down and then up to blend the colors a little. Ok, while we are still on this layer, let's change the color into the lower one. And pick the soft brush from airbrushing. Let me lower the brush size to 2% and draw the following way. Just a circle that is a little bigger than the eye and goes a little up. Same on the second eye. Then switch to yellow and draw on the lower parts. On the first eye and on the second as well. It will give this feeling of depth. This layer finished. Let's go here, create a layer above and clip it. I will grab the darkest brown color for shading. Change the brush back to grunge from textures. First, let's shade this part of the leg. Not pressing, so there is no sharp transition between two colors. Same on another leg, just adding the color slightly. For highlights, I will use the color that was a base one on the upper layer. I will lighten the upper area here and also on another leg. After we are done with shading, let's go to base color layer and select the smudge tool, set to copper head brush from drawing set. Let's lower the size and smudge the upper edge where the leg grows from the fur. I will make circles outwards because this layer is located above the fur layer and we couldn't do it in another way. We are getting furry texture around the leg base. When we smudge in the opposite direction it gets less obvious. So I'm changing the direction and making more strokes until it looks exactly as I want it to look. More natural and matching with the entire shape structure. It may take some time before we get there. Finally done with the first one. Proceeding to the second. First, I'm smudging it outwards to create the furry texture around the leg. And then we should soften it a little, going in the opposite direction. Let's see. Ok, looks fine now. Our ship is ready. We can work on the background now. I will create a new layer below all layers. Select the light violet color and go to Sweet Putty Brush Set for Sugar Cloud Brush. I will set the opacity to 60% and create the cloudy texture around the ship, making the circular moves with the pencil. Then switch to darker violet. Maybe lower the size a little and add this color gradually, making it blend with the previous one. Next goes this pink. I will add it on the side, same way. Then draw with the lighter one around the upper part and mix it with other shades. Finally, let's pick this light yellow that we used for highlights. Better lower the opacity 
and draw on the edges of this big soft cloud that we made behind the ship. I know that many of you love this brush for its soft texture and I think it's one of my favorites as well. It will work as a transition color between the background color and all other shades of this shape. I will set the smudge tool to same brush, lower the size a bit and adjust the cloud shape, pushing the edges towards the center or backwards, depending on the initial shape that your cloud has. This way the colors also will blend better. Once we are done with it, let's go and create one more layer above. I will change the brush to monoline from calligraphy. Let's draw an ellipse that will work as a ground for us. I will adjust the shape a bit by dragging these dots and fill it. Go to Gaussian Blur. Click on layer and slide to the right until it gets 15.7%. I will move it down a little with this arrow. Ok, let's go to the Sweet Party brush set again and pick the star pen, which I often use as a stem. I will set the size to 22% and tap a few times on the canvas above the ship. A couple of more here. Then pick the studio pen from Inkin, make the size 2% and draw a vertical line coming from the star top, tapping finger to make the angle 90 degrees. Same for the second star. And all the rest. If you need to move it, just click on Edit Shape button and place the line where needed. I will finish the last one. Move it. And finally, let's draw a half moon here. I will make unclosed round curve. Go to Edit Shape and select circle. Then try to connect these two dots with a smaller arc. If we click on edit, we can drag any of these dots to place the shape in the right way. Ok, I like how the half moon looks and I can feel it. Painting inside these tiny gaps that we got after filling. And we will draw this vertical rope. Our illustration of a cute ship is complete. I hope you enjoyed doing this tutorial with me. I would be happy to see your drawings, so don't forget to tag me at Tettyworks if you post on Instagram. If you want to see more videos like this and support me, Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. See you in the next tutorial.